In expression of these truths and the testimony given to them, we said in the sixth degree of the first station, There is no God but God, to the necessity of whose existence and unity points the consensus of all the species of trees and plants that are engaged in glorifying God, and speak with the eloquent and well-ordered words of their leaves, their loquacious and comely flowers, their well-ordered and well-spoken fruits, by the testimony of the sublimity of the comprehensiveness of the truth of bestowal, bounty, and generosity, done in purpose of mercy, and the truth of differentiation, adornment, and decoration, done with will and wisdom. Definite, too, is the indication given by the truth of the opening of all their symmetrical, adorned, distinct, variegated, and infinite forms, from seeds and grains that resemble and approximate each other, that are finite and limited. As this traveler through the cosmos proceeded on his meditative journey with increased eagerness and a bouquet of gnosis and faith, itself like a spring, gathered from the garden of the spring, there opened before his truth-perceiving intellect, his cognitive reason, the gate to the animal and bird realm. With hundreds of thousands of different voices and various tongues, he was invited to enter. Entering, he saw that all the animals and birds and their different species, groups, and nations were proclaiming silently and aloud, There is no God but He, and had thus turned the, the face of the earth into a vast place of invocation, an expansive assembly for the proclamation of God's glory. He saw each of them to be like an ode dedicated to God, a word proclaiming His glory, a letter indicating His mercy, each of them describing the Maker and offering Him thanks and encomium. It was as if the senses, powers, members, and instruments of those animals and birds were orderly and balanced words, or perfect and disciplined expressions. He observed three great and comprehensive truths indicating in decisive form their offering of thanks to the Creator and Provider and their testimony to His unity. The first, their being brought into existence with wisdom and purpose, and their creation full of art in a fashion that in no way can be attributed to chance, to blind force, or inanimate nature. Their being created and composed in purposes and knowledgeable manner. Their animation and being given life in a way that displays in twenty aspects the manifestation of knowledge, wisdom, and will. All of this is a truth that bears witness to the necessary existence of the eternally living and self-subsistent. His seven attributes and unity, a witness repeated to the number of all animate beings. The second, there appears from this a truth so vast and powerful that none other than the one powerful over all things, the one knowledgeable, of all things, could lay claim to it. This comprehensive act which displays in every respect thousands of wonders and instances of wisdom, it is impossible and precluded that anything other than such a one could lay claim to it. The third. The emergence and unfolding of those countless creatures 
and there are hundreds of thousands of different shapes and forms, each of which is a miracle of wisdom. Their emergence from eggs and drops of water called sperm that are identical with each other or closely resemble each other and are limited and finite in number. All of this, in the most orderly, symmetrical and unfailing fashion, is so brilliant a truth as to be illumined with proofs and evidences as numerous as the animals themselves. By the consensus of these three truths, all the species of animals are engaged together in testifying that there is no God but He. It is as if the whole earth, like a great man, were saying, There is no God but He, in a manner benefiting its vastness and conveying its testimony to the dwellers of the heavens. The traveler saw this and understood it perfectly. In expression of these truths, we said in the seventh degree of the first station, There is no God but God, to whose necessary existence in unity points the consensus of all animals and birds that praise God and bear witness to Him with the words of their senses, their faculties and powers, words well balanced, ordered and eloquent, with the words of their limbs and members, words perfect and persuasive. By the testimony of the sublimity and the comprehensiveness of the truth of bringing into being, making and creating, according to will, the truth of distinction and decoration according to purpose, and the truth of proportioning and forming according to wisdom. Definite, too, is the indication given by the truth of the opening of all their orderly, distinct, variegated, and infinite forms out of identical or similar eggs and drops of sperm that are finite and limited. The second truth, the absoluteness, the comprehensiveness, and appearance in infinite form of the dominical deeds seen at work in the cosmos. It is only God's wisdom and will that limits and restricts these deeds, as well as the inherent capacities of the objects in places in which they manifest themselves. Stray chance, dumb nature, blind force, unconscious causality, and the elements that without restriction are scattered in every direction, none of these can have any part in the most balanced, wise, perspicacious, life-giving, orderly and firm deeds of the Creator. They are used rather but by the command, will and power of the glorious doer as an apparent veil to conceal his power. We will set forth three from among the numerous subtle points that relate to the three deeds indicated in three continuous verses in Surah al -Nah. The first, Your sustainer inspired in the bee that it should seek a dwelling place in the mountains. The bee is, with respect to its disposition and function, such a miracle of God's power that a whole Surah, Surah al -Nah, has been named after it. For to inscribe to the minute head of that little honey machine a complete program for the fulfillment of its important task, to place in its diminutive stomach the most delicious of foods and to ripen it there, to place in its sting poison capable of destroying and killing animate beings without causing any harm to its own body or to the member in question, to do all this without the utmost care and knowledge, with exceeding wisdom and purposiveness, partakes of a perfect orderliness and equilibrium, and hence unconscious, disorderly, disequilibrated nature and accident could never interfere or participate in any of this. <laughs> 